Meg, you look like you wear those wedge sneakers. Do you do that? No, because I am clumsy. I'll trip. Okay. Meg, you look like you gave up on trying to be cute after that baby was born. <laughs> We're going to see a lot of disappointed mistakes from Nick today. <laughs> I, you know what? It's International Women's Day. I'm not, I'm not gonna sit here and let you talk and degrade women. Oh, you stop it! You play both You're sides every time you get a chance. Women. We get a solid joke on you. It's always sexist, but when you light us up, it ain't never been. You know what? You're not gonna degrade me, Kevin. Did y'all see? Did y'all see Burger King's tweet? Uh, Man, what is there? How could you say that? Women are in the kitchen. That was great marketing. You had to like see the next tweet to be like, okay, okay. Oh, no, I didn't see put, the next tweet. Put that, oh. Well, you have to put that in the same tweet. That's why. The next oh, tweet. What was the next like, tweet? Was like, well, it was, it was it was women belong in the kitchen, and it was just be, it, the next tweet was like this today. Burger King tweeted out women belong in the kitchen, and then the the follow up was like uh, uh, only if they want to be if they want to because twenty percent of uh, chefs are women, and it should be more. And we're launching this program, and I was just like, yo, I never. That's the thing about Twitter. I never saw the follow up stuff. I just saw the people just screenshot the women belong in the kitchen, and when when these respond. Wendy's is probably going to re respond. Wendy has to respond. The only chance at this point. Well, it, it worked though, because this, as of right now, that tweet Pat has six hundred and three thousand likes. Wow, three hundred thousand yeah, retweets. Not going no, you know, for the same reasons that Wendy's does. Like when Wendy's like makes fun of the McDonald's and is like, "Oh, your your patty's frozen." That goes viral because it's like, yeah, Wendy's thinks they're better. Right. But Burger King was just like, "Let's go viral for, <laughs> for by completely <laughs> missing the mark." It what was about just... good old fashioned sexism, huh, guys? <laughs> We're in the like, kitchen. You know they don't stand by because it it's Burger King UK. They were like, if they get fried up, then we don't really got that many in London anyway. That's why they. Make... It was somebody who was brand new to social media. Like, let's do the Wendy's thing, eh? That's <laughs> was that a British accent? Yeah, it was. It was more Australian, huh? Who says that? Yeah. I think Canadian. I think Canadian, Canadian say that. Mm. But when I was in Canada, well, I mostly was around black people. Nobody really talked like that when I was in when I've been to Toronto. I didn't hear any mates either. Yeah. Or A. Is it A or mate? A. a. Mate is Australia. Or and even like Hey Kev, did you have um the gravy fries with the curds? Poutine? Poutine. Poutine. Yeah. Do you like it? it? A, it's a lot, man. It's I mean I and I eat fat it's stuff. Heavy. But it is heavy, bro. That's a whole I mean, meal. It's yes. a whole meal. But Don't I definitely had it. Bro. The gravy, though, how was the gravy? Because great, I've had good and bad gravy. It was, it was solid. It was really good. Hmm. Where y'all curds where are you? don't sound like they are good, but they are good. The, your curd, that was my next question. The curds were good. <laughs> yeah, it's kind of like just like? soft, soft cheese, I guess. Yeah, it's kind of like are they selling gravy fries. In uh, they have a poutineery or something in LA. If you want to try it, in Los Angeles. Oh, uh, do they really? Yeah, it's down um over there it's off. The it, it's in Hollywood. I would only do it if it was if I was in the environment. I wouldn't go yeah. out to eat gravy fries. Because then if you don't like it, you'd be like, well, I haven't had poutine. And people in Canada would be like, no, nah, you ain't had it from here. Then it ain't real. Yeah, you're going to get it. <laughs> but if you know, you want to just see what it's like, kind of like. But see, but like if you take jerk chicken from non-Jamaicans, it, it ain't what it's like. No. Mm because -hmm. uh, I had different. jerk chicken, you know, from non-Jamaicans and it was like super saucy. And then I went to Jamaica and it was like dry rub and then yeah. i went to like authentic jamaican restaurants and it don't be saucy but then at my local grocery ralph's they sell jerk chicken sauce but that's that's not real i i, I like mine a little saucy I ain't, I ain't gonna hold you i like it with a little sauce not like dripping or anything like but i like it wet i don't like when it's just like the the rub on there <laughs> that jerk because your mouth be dry you need a little sauce to... have you had it in jamaica though to here i have not i have not been to jamaica just don't buy jerk chicken from Panda Express. Uh, trust me, it's not. It's not oh, obvious. They, they Why would you do that? They selling that? Why are they? They got no business selling. Yeah, at all. That, that, that ain't even their. Uh, that ain't even their. Oh, uh, maybe there's so many. But David, there's so many. Hold on, wait, 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 guys. Let's let let Kev figure out what he was trying to say. That ain't even that what Kev. I don't know what it was. I, you could be here for an hour, and I would. 
think about. I'm like, is that region or ethnicity? <laughs> that, that ain't their thing. Cuisine. Um, before we Cuisine. go any further, Cuisine. I want to uh, introduce uh, Nick Carthan. He's gonna, he's gonna be the guest today on Squadcast, man. Because we sometimes we get to, well, I'll, sometimes we get to introduce the guest. So we got Nick Carthan in here. So people won't be like, who is the guest? You never tell us who the guest is. I love how we always <laughs> make people the commenter's voice sound like that. <laughs> Right. Oh, commenter, <laughs> we never say their their comments as if it's a, a logic. They were never like, "Who is the guest?" You guys don't put that in the description. It's yeah. always that <laughs> nasally. <Yeah. laughs> so rude. Uh, so nasty. So rude. Yeah. Yeah. You know. You're gonna introduce him though. I did. I just I just gave him an introduction. He's a. Uh, you seen him on Zoom with the homies, ladies and gentlemen. He's a comedian. Uh, out of New York, by the way, LA now, out here doing this thing, tearing down stages. He also has his own uh, podcast, the Curious Web. So here you always say tearing down the stages. You got a, the most recycled introduction. We don't even be doing stand up. And you always be saying tearing down stage. To here just gets into like a, this is my host thing. He's been doing this, you know, man. Tearing down stages from coast to coast. You know him from this. He just, he's on autopilot. We also have to be fair. Yeah. To be fair, to hear is tired and overworked. He didn't. He, no, no, no. He's he was he was just saying he was just sitting on the bed today. I'm sorry, but this is we we have to do this to you. I'm, I I'm took a break this friends. week. I took a break. Don't do this because people in the comments. I don't. I don't want. I don't. No, because I like having everybody on my side. Because I'm going to get all of this shit out. Yeah, why you be listening to the people in the comments, man? I told you about my cousin's friend. <laughs> my cousin got a friend who just sits at the laptop putting negativity in the comments section as a job, eating cheese balls 24 hours a day. As a job, you mean, or because or he's I asked evil? Him, I said, what are you doing? I asked him, I saw him commenting, and I said, you know the person? He was like, nah, this is, this is just what I do. And he was just dead for 24 hours eating cheese balls like this. This, <laughs> just because he wanted to buy cheese balls. Oh my gosh! This cheese. Oh, that's wow. what commenters do. They eat cheese balls and write negativity. That's, like, that's what I imagined, but I didn't think that was actually true. <laughs> oh, it's a real thing. <laughs> that's what anyway. Sad. We also have Kev on stage here, tearing down burgers and tear down. <laughs> there we go. There go. Mix it up. You know what I'm saying. <laughs> Meg Scoop <laughs> and Patrick Cloud as well. Uh, so we have we have a great show going, man. We got what are they tearing down? Huh? What are they tearing down? Same things. <laughs> Burgers also. <laughs> Burgers yeah, also. Meg is t tearing down self esteem of people and stuff. Oof. She got man. you early, huh? Why is it you, <laughs> you couldn't even finish that. She had hey, those in glasses that don't have lenses in them. Okay, to go to commercial. <laughs> No, I'm serious. I was just asking. Are those the ones? Yes, that they are work? because you see, you see the reflection here, but you don't see the reflection here. I have to. Wow. These are like TV glasses. Meg, Meg has had those for so long. She keeps them like, in a glasses case, like they real glasses. Like you don't just throw them under your bed and shut up. <laughs> I really went to look for these today. I was like, I'm gonna wear my lensless glasses today. Meg, have you been going out? Uh, like outside of my house. Yeah. Yeah. It's nice. Out. No, I'm talking about like indoor activities. Uh, not really. No, like I mean, maybe go out to eat, but that's about it. Oh, okay. Did you Airbnb your house out to um to to All Star Weekend to some people? No, know? no, I let them people sleep in their cars. Okay, that's what they get for that coming. Is crazy U hauls, bro. That yeah. was, bro. That was they was down so bad. My dad that's taught so me weird. if you don't have enough money to go <laughs> mm -hmm. rent a car right. and a hotel and come back, you don't have enough money to go. Yeah. They was, was really like, down there with the one way ticket. And just, what are you just wishing for the best? <laughs> yeah, it, it's like American Idol. Like the desperation, they're just like, this is my one audition. And I don't I don't get it. Like what 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 is Meg, what is the the ideal? So, do you know anybody who like actually struck it? Like did the get a, get a rapper on ball? <laughs> That's, that's what, does that, what does that mean? It's like, okay, will you house me now? I'm, I'm... Jasmine Sullivan has a song about this. She said, I'm, I'm going to move to Atlanta. I'm going to find me a rapper. He's going to buy me a booty and maybe get in a movie. And that's the playbook, ladies and gentlemen. Booty and maybe a movie? Man, <laughs> booty first. If you're only going to get one thing, you got to get the butt. Because the butt can lead to more stuff. And the butt but is easy to get. There also be more videos and stuff good. like that, but I don't, I don't know, man. I just, I, it just didn't seem like a good plan to get a one-way ticket to Atlanta. 
Right. That's the uh, All Star man. Weekend. That's the I only live once mentality that goes on nowadays, where you just pick up, leave your, leave everything, and hope that everything turns out okay. But you were in a U-Haul. Like the first thing I thought was like, the coochie got to stink a little. <laughs> I want to know where they where they taking. You got ready in a U-Haul. It's a, at least a little. No, I mean, but you know what? That's actually kind of genius. You're like, you know what? I'm gonna just rent me a U-Haul. That way, I have a place to stay, and I have a ride to get there and get around. And then if you have a gym membership, because the gyms are open in in Atlanta, take a shot at the gym. Meg, that's that's what you do if you're homeless, Meg. You don't do that if you're going on vacation. That's a that's a life hack for when you're homeless and you lost everything. Not when you're like trying to score big. Bro, the thought of somebody being like, okay, listen up, girls. I've got it. I've got all of our problems. No car, no hotel. We have a coattail. It's the car and the hotel. We drive, blow up the air mattress, take a nap. It's the next club. <laughs> Listen, I want like all the, what is, they driving around in this U-Haul, parking two blocks away so nobody see them get out of the U-Haul when they walk up to the venue. Then you Uber black to the event from where Listen, somebody parking. somebody break into the somebody break into the hotel. I mean, your car. They just they're they still. <laughs> they broke it to here. If they break into the hotel, they broke into they break into the car. They broke into your house. Right. <laughs> imagine, imagine spending a weekend in a U a U haul, but then you go home to a three bedroom apartment. Imagine trying to process. <laughs> no, imagine bagging one of those girls, and then she's like, "I'll take you to my place." <laughs> and hits you with one of these. Choo, 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 choo. <laughs> <laughs> I also want to know how many girls got out of that U-Haul before the guy pulled his camera out. Because he might have just caught the last one. Maybe he's like, okay, hold on. This is wait, did a person just come out of the back of there? He said that wasn't the first one. He said there was someone before her. Oh, he said that? Yeah, they were deep in there. <laughs> I don't think that's a solo more decision. We, the more that that's we a really about. ambitious solo decision. When you go out of town, when you the go out of town. <laughs> When you go out of town, you see like there's homeless people and then there's homeless people, you wonder why they became homeless. And those are the people that go out of town on those type of missions. And it is end up stuck. Like when I go to South Beach, you ever see those people that be selling their rap CDs? Those are the people that went out there with, with a plan. Like they're out there and they just got stuck. They got trapped and they were never able to come back. That's that's very unfortunate. What if your origin story from moving to Atlanta was like, how'd you move here? Well, you know, I got a U-Haul and came down for All-Star. Didn't make the money uh, that I thought, so now I live here. <laughs> that that's, same U-Haul. That's, that's, that's somebody's trip. They, they A group of people planned a trip, and the person that was supposed to be over the hotel did not, like, process it or, like, didn't wait for it to go through it. Like, don't close this page before you get your... <laughs> They was like, sin done, right? And they got down there and was like, yeah, checking in, last name Brown. It was like, no reservation. Oh, no, it's got to be there. I got to, do you have a confirmation number? I got to, uh. <laughs> how, how, much, how much cheaper is a U-Haul than an RV? A U-Haul be like $29 a day in town. Yeah. Not, not, consi not including mileage. Right. They was like, how far are you going? Uh, to the Exxon down the street. <laughs> Or any other lot where oh, it my God. Excellent. You gotta admire the ingenuity and the, you know, and I the, feel like if I was like twenty or something and I was broke, I feel like I'd be like, you know what, let's just do it. Balls to the wall. You would do that, Meg. No, at, you wouldn't. Probably like twenty, yeah. Mm. At twenty? At like nineteen, twenty. Meg, there's 20. no way you were staying in a U Haul at All Star Weekend at twenty. Meg, if Meg would be Hold on. If it was a last minute trip, I was broke. Um, if somebody was like, yo, we got, we, we're able to get into like the hottest club, whatever, VIP. You just gotta, you know, we just gotta look. The only thing is we just got to stay in this U-Haul, but I got us some blow up mattresses, like come through. I would do it. And I got every, a gym membership. So that's, I know. Every, I can every trip oh, is last oh. minute if you broke. <laughs> There's not enough planning in the world. If you broke, you can plan all you want to for three weeks. If you still ain't got no money, you still ain't gonna have no money. It's simple as that. So I don't, I don't know. I think this is a perfect place for us to jump right into the first topic of the day. And we're gonna do that right after this. 
Fellas, St. Patty's Day is coming, all right? And if you plan on getting a little lucky, then you need to invest with the good people over at Manscaped. Why? Because Manscaped is the global leader for below-the-waist grooming and the official sponsor of all Death Squadcasts. Now, to ensure that you have the right tools for your family jewels, you need to visit manscaped.com and get 20% off by using the code SQUAD. That's S-Q-U-A-D-D. Not only that, but you'll also get free shipping. Now, when you get over to Manscaped, what should you get? It's a lot of stuff. I know it might be overwhelming. Well, let me point you in the right direction. All you really need right now is to get the performance package. All right, this is the ultimate men's hygiene bundle. Okay, you get the weed whacker, all right, which is the ear and nose hair trimmer. All right, this is waterproof. You use it anytime, but fellas, listen to me, use it. All right, this bundle also includes the Lawnmower 3.0 trimmer, the best trimmer on the market for your balls, butt, and body. This third generation trimmer features a cutting edge ceramic blade to reduce all of those rooming accidents thanks to their advanced skin safe technology. So you can be comfortable and confident. Shame to your thunder down under. You and your partner will get lucky, all right? That Lawnmower 3.0 will showcase your pot of gold like no other. And let's not forget the famous liquid formulations, the Crop Preserver Ball Deodorant and the Crop Reviver Ball Toner to maximize your ball hygiene routine. Now, in addition to that, you'll also receive the Manscaped boxes and the shared travel bag. Listen, there is no reason not to take advantage of this. Listen, you can get 20% off and free shipping if you use the code SQUAD, S-Q-U-A-D-D, at manscaped.com. Also, very important, fellas, every purchase at manscaped.com goes to a contributions made to Testicular Cancer Society to bring awareness to testicular cancer, men's health, and early cancer detection. Now, I'm going to tell you this one last time because I need you to do it, all right? Get 20% off and free shipping and free shipping with the code SQUAD, S-Q-U-A-D-D, at manscaped.com. That's 20% off and free shipping at manscaped.com. Use the promo code SQUAD. There's the gold at the end of the rainbow, fellas, with Manscaped. First topic of the day, appropriately, is would you rather spend the day with a complainer versus spend the day with a bragger? So me or Meg? Yes, basically. Yes. <laughs> That's all I was gonna say. <laughs> uh, yeah. Imagine one of the one of the people in the in the U-Haul bragging about the crib they got, and then y'all stand. <laughs> that is just it. Don't make no sense to me. That's basically what Clubhouse is. It's just braggers mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and complainers. If it's blue, literally just braggers and complainers makes up the oh whole God. experience on Clubhouse. That is I so think cool. that's why I, I faded out on Clubhouse Tough. Yes. I was like, I can't. Yeah. Um, you want to be I, the only bragger, huh? That's right. <laughs> when I don't have my rooms, there's no moderators. Just me, baby. Nobody else on the stage. <laughs> <laughs> He's right. I don't really brag that much, though. Oh. Uh -huh. I mean, I don't have to brag. You can see the background. It, it's, it brags for itself. Oh, that's right. Yeah, it's like show me, show me you're rich without telling me you're rich was a person. It would be you. I don't, bear, I don't never say nothing. I low key <laughs> keep it humble. That's what I'm saying. You don't really say it, but you just be like, let me order Postmates from six different restaurants at the I same time. time. That's no, that's never. I can't. Be, I think other people do that. I don't think that many. I don't think that's such a foreign idea. Yeah, other people that, may do that. two, two at once. Can you do three? You, you like I like the sides from here. I like the entree sure. from here. This is where I need my milkshake. The fact that you are a Postmate just one milkshake, you have a problem. I you saw him Postmate uh, napkins from Wendy's once. He just said he likes the feel of them when he wipes up his barbecue sauce. <laughs> <laughs> no, no I can't, I can't fault him for that because I Postmates napkins from Jack in the Box with ranch all the time. That's, kind of my <laughs> that was, that's a side salad for you. <laughs> <laughs> That's kind of my jammy jam. It's <laughs> a side salad for you. It's hilarious. <laughs> Complain. I feel like complainers are worse. Usually, if, if you're with a bragger, maybe they have something that they brag about that might be valuable to you. But complainers just be like, bro, just hush. I feel like if I'm with a bragger, I'm like, all right, when they get by, by to pick up the building, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> Drop yeah. the card if you got it like that. That's what I would do all the time. <laughs> but you can brag without having money. You could brag about stuff you used to be in, where you used to do in life. People brag about how cool that's, they were in high school. Annoying. 
Yeah. That is the like, okay, you were cool in high school or you were starting court. None of that matters now, though. I know, man, you know, man, state championship, we was down three. I scored it. Was that hush, hush. Is that you know worse what? than bragging about something that's not cool to you at all? <laughs> New Yorkers brag about they do rag. Ain't that right, Nick? That's what y'all do. Y'all be at the subway just like, look, but I got this from Macy's up. Man, shut the fuck up. <laughs> we, we never bragged about our do rags, man. What are you talking no, we had about to hear. <laughs> two tones. You say two what? We the first people to create the two tone do rags. We already know we got the dope do rags. That's you right. created that. Do rags. <laughs> New York started that. The How do you know that for sure? Huh? How you know that for sure? New York's best do rag on the. <laughs> <laughs> hey, so- some scientist, what if some scientist in a bubble jacket like accidentally created it? They like mixed two of them together. It was like, oh, son. <laughs> <laughs> I did it, son. <laughs> like a white bubble jacket. <laughs> the thing about New York that I can't admit. We thought everything was created out the way the way New York is set up. You know what I'm saying? But then when we left, I saw my power just dwindle when I moved to LA. And I was talking about New York stuff and people just be like, nah, nah, it's dwindle. We've had no that for a while. No one likes drag on. I was like, oh, okay. <laughs> because I'm sure, I sure thought people thought I for real. Listen, when I moved out here, I was brag. I'm like, man, drag on is dope. And then people was like, nah. He was like so shocking to us. <laughs> my heart. You know what I'm saying? Like, if find, out people, find out people didn't have the same love for Mace the way I did. Like, I'm over here waiting for this Mace versus battle. People are like, nah, you don't have enough hits. <laughs> he wasn't out that long, but he- Yeah, he Mace, Mace could do his whole first album. His whole first album was slapping. Drag on is such an obscure name to pull out from nowhere. I love Drag on. On the Listen. Rough Riders uh, <laughs> compilation album, he always delivered a hot verse. Mace. You know what I'm saying? Nick, Nick is one of the biggest drag on fans, and I always tell him drag on <laughs> is the East Coast Silk the Shocker. They rap exactly the same. Both of, them, both of them rap like they're running from the beat. Like they got what? like they're racing the beat to the end of the track. Oh, I have to listen to this. I was in a cipher with some people um like memorizing some bars, and I did some drag on bars and nobody knew it in Atlanta. <laughs> I was like, I spit these bars to make your head shake. He was out there like this. First of all, why was you in a cipher? Because you know how like, you know, like when people start like reminiscing rap songs from each artist or whatever. So they, somebody did like, I think big. And then I was like, I was like, oh, okay. I'm gonna kill him with this Rough Rider verse. You know what I'm saying? The Rough Rider <laughs> that, that was what you had in your back pocket out of all the famous Listen, verses the rappers like, ever. Oh, locked and loaded for no reason whatsoever. Right here, like I had it right here because Dragon had the ab limbs, the, ha, ha, the fire. I was like, man, Listen, didn't man. know. Yeah. Like, you sound like your heart was broken when you found out oh. nobody was rocking with Dragon like that. <laughs> He said you kind of like you asked everybody too. Listen, growing up, I thought Drag On and Memphis Bleak were going to be the, the was going to take over rap the way it was set up in New York. Because Bleak was, remember Jay Z said it. He's like, "Yo, Bleak, you want to hit away," and I believed it. I always <laughs> believed it. Right? I, <laughs> You're like the worst A and R in history. <laughs> <laughs> oh Yo. my god! Oh, that's Bleak, Bleak, I yeah. believe. That first Memphis Bleak uh, album with Round Here, that one was like, okay, I saw the potential. Then the follow-up album, I was like, he ain't going to do it. Do you think uh, Do you think rappers know? Do you feel like they know when their time is passed? No. 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 I feel, like, like I feel like they know it, but they feel so invested. They're like, I just got to see it. I got to see it through, my boy. I got to see it through, my boy. <laughs> you got to know. Be- you got to know. They're like, yeah, so what, what's the first week sales look like? First of all, we go off of streaming, not sales. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> did you call Tower Records? Uh, <laughs> sit down. Ain't <laughs> 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 hey, they come in a record label hot. They come in real loud. Hey, y'all better start fuck with me because Death Row Records want to holler at you, sir. <laughs> what are like three rappers that still think they're like where Drake is at? Like, like they still think they're on that level now. Bow wow. Dra- Dragon. 
Uh, drag on, come on, Ted. Don't you drag I on. Think Fab, I think Fab, Fab thinks he's where Drake's at. Well, I don't think, I don't think that. I think Fab knows his lane. I think Fab knows he has a good following. He puts something out, people going to fuck with it, and he's funny. He's funny online. I think yeah. that's what he, he, that's that's really where that was saved, Fab. Like I really feel like that and those uh the the summer mixtapes, those are what what kept Fab relevant because he was so so present on social media because he the wasn't really dropping albums. He was just dropping those projects. The funniest tweet I saw from an artist this week it was Drake was dropping Scary Hours right, and then Tory Lanez retweeted and said, "Yo, both two major artists dropping the album the same day, right?" And it was. <laughs> <laughs> and I was like, does he not know that we don't we don't we don't care about his album dropping today? Cause he's still because he's always carried that I'm I got that Drake energy like type of music. Uh I didn't even know he dropped something this week. I didn't know I didn't know he dropped something either. There we go. I there, I, I stopped following him. Uh, there we go. I did too. I never really followed Tory Lanez anyway, but I, I purposely haven't have ignored him. Well I, I didn't was on ball alert so i think they was making fun of him so I, I but uh but if drag on dropped you would know no why would we know <laughs> that's what i'm saying like what do you think drag on is I doing don't right even now? know who drag on is he know who it is, but like what connection drag on that is, onto my timeline drag drag on is like top two henchmen of all hip-hop like like side of henchmen because yo every rapper had a henchman <laughs> He was in a movie. He fought Steven Seagal. He was in a movie with, with, with DMA. Did he really? Yeah, see, That's Blood cool. Brother. You see what I'm saying? Come on, man. Dragon's an actor. I don't know enough to say anything. But that's hilarious. No, Pat called him Dragon, so he definitely don't know. I mean, that's how Dragon's it's spelled. only 42. That's how it's spelled. It's spelled like Dragon with the dash on it. That's what I'm first saying. All, first of all, Dragon is SAG. <laughs> 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 he sagged. Not too many rappers. <laughs> he sagged. Real friends? Are y'all friends for real? Who? Me and Dragon? No, I'm not friends with Dragon. I haven't met him. <laughs> like Back in the day when his album came out, the uh, the line at, uh, what was the name of the Power Records? The, the line that they had outside the store wasn't really friendly. So I didn't get to get my autograph from Dragon. <laughs> it wasn't really friendly? <laughs> at that time, what Dragon represented when his album came out. <laughs> <laughs> We all line at Tower Records. Well, wait, wait. So there was just like a bunch of hood niggas in line. Hood niggas for in line. Robbing, robbing people who were purchasing the autograph uh, H2O. That was the name of his first album. H2O, Drag On. All right. That's hilarious. Hood fans is funny. Wow. Okay. He's fighting in line, waiting for it to drop. That's mm -hmm. fun. I mean, you know, I wish him the best. It just, you know, I don't know. I always wonder what rappers can do after that has happened. Cause I feel like you can't get like, you can't be at a library. Like, what do you do? Like, I think Jada Kiss and them, they did it right. They opened up a, a, a juice shop and a couple other small businesses. So I feel like hey, you hey, can hey, kind hey. of do something. It's not over for Jada Drag Kiss. on real name is it, Melvin Smalls. Melvin? <laughs> Melvin Smalls. <laughs> and that's where the character came from, was, uh, was inspired from in Baby Boy. For, uh, for, <laughs> wow. I'm just trying to help him out. You know what I'm saying? Wow. I'm gonna listen to him. If he if you said he's like Silk the Shocker, I feel like he's worth a listen. <laughs> I mean, go ahead, give it a try, my boy. That's Do you quite... think Ali knows his his time is done? Uh, to him from first the same lunatic. First of all, <laughs> Ali is next up. <laughs> <laughs> I like Dragon and Ali. Dragon's a little bit. <laughs> oh, Ali. Uh, Ali. Wait, when was, was Ali the one with the locks? Ali was the one with the goatee and the do rag. Yeah, he had the baseball card. His first album was called Heavy Starch. Did you know about that, Kev? I, I, outside of Nelly, they, they, they all kind of got mixed up. I didn't up know too. he had an album. Heavy Starch. Who was the one with the, who was the one with the locks? Doesn't even matter. Oh, Murphy, Murphy Lee. Lee. Murphy Lee. Murphy Lee. I liked him. Ali, Ali had the Jason mask. No, no. don't slow down. Ali was like bald. Was bald? Not even I him. I never saw his head. He always had a hat okay, on. Okay, Ali, I gotta look. Oh, not even. Not you knew the guy with the mask before you knew Ali. So what does that tell you about Ali? <laughs> Ali was a tall guy. 
So first of all, first of all, Ali was a part of he's part of the Saint Lunatics. Okay. <laughs> He had an oh, album he that came with somebody. His, his first album, debut album, was called Heavy Starch. That was in 2002. He had a follow-up album called Black Gold in 2019. Neither here or there. Uh, you uh, listen to both? He, 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 he did a collaboration album with uh, Big Gip from, um, from um, well, yeah. Dungeon Family, not Dungeon Family, but Goody Mob. They did, yeah. they did it called Kinfolk in, in 2007. I get Was he sag? <laughs> <laughs> Dragon was only in the Rough Riders movies, though. No, uh, Blood Brothers, I don't think that was a Rough Riders movie. And he played a scientist in the movie <laughs> with DMX as well. That's right. DMX a scientist? No, no. Dragon was the smart brother. He was a scientist. He dealt with computers. Range. You see what I'm saying? <laughs> These dumb drag on facts. We don't care. <laughs> we I, don't I think like drag on will drag on will be so happy to know that somebody somewhere out there is somebody going up for him. Hey, I'm, I'm, I'm saying say, you could be somewhere right now and you might be have asked a few drag on questions and I saved you. Sad H2O Melvin. Did you say she might be somewhere where there's a drag on trivia? <laughs> Back on trivia, you never know. <laughs> million Meg, dollars on Meg, the line. Meg wouldn't be there. Million yeah. dollars on the line. I'll, I'll go out on a limb and say I don't think any of us would be there. Oh <laughs> my <laughs> god! <laughs> Meg, what is Dragon's biggest accomplishment? Sag. Just say it. Sag. <laughs> you win a million dollars. Listen, let's let's go ahead and and put it to a vote. Would you rather hang around a complainer or a bragger? Um, they're the same exact thing except bragging is more happy and complaining is sad so i'm gonna pick the bragger okay all right i don't know sometimes you can complain about something it can be some real shit that's like a lot of stand-up isn't it but all day you doing it all day you hang around somebody all day that's 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 complaining that's a lot you know what i'll say both is a lot both is all day. You know what I'll say? Um, at Interscope Records, they told Drag on his album was going to drop three different yeah. times. He never complained about, <laughs> never complained about when his album would come out, but he bragged about the heat that he spit. You know what I'm saying? So did it drop? You know? Did it drop? They, oh, it did. H2O, and it sold um, 50,000 copies. Uh, <laughs> 50, First week. The first week release. So let's let's go ahead and put it. What, what, what you going with a bragger or a complainer, uh, Dick? Uh, bragger. Okay. Uh, Pat, you said which one? I'm gonna go bragger. Okay, Pat. I mean, uh, Kev. I'd rather hang with a bragger. Okay, I'm gonna go bragger as well. So braggers have it, and we're gonna jump right into the second topic. Next topic of the day, we have which one is better, macaroni salad versus potato salad? Macaroni. Now, this is not even a comment. This is not a this is not a contest at all. Why? <laughs> potato salad far and wide. Oh why? Because you, you built like a potato. <laughs> 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 Go ahead and laugh with your odd body. <laughs> <laughs> Give him a laugh. Am I really built that oddly? <laughs> no, just like this. I, I am built like a potato. That was pretty that was pretty honest. You're you're built like either a pear you wouldn't want or an avocado you do want. <laughs> I don't know if that made anything <laughs> to anybody. Ah, <laughs> basically <accurate>. produce. <laughs> produce is a good way of putting it. I'm losing weight, guys, ain't I? You are. You are. You are. That wasn't the question. I don't think even when I was thin in high school, I, I was no one would say I was built good. I had a I had <laughs> skinny arms. I, I never look, had it. You don't look out of shape though. Like some people that you could look at them and they look out of shape. You know? <laughs> uh, I think I disagree with you there, Nick. Looking at myself often, I'd be like, hmm, you gotta get together. <laughs> no, but you look like if you had to like run for your life, that you could you may possibly make it. I also I I run athletically. I was watching the challenge show. 
uh, to hear he don't run like he ran in that right. athletic contest. He's not going to make it. But it looked like Tony he might either, make it. really. Tony did look like he <laughs> did. <laughs> Angel Angel looked like she played sports. To hear look like he carried a bass a tenor saxophone around. Because <laughs> <laughs> I did. <laughs> You're right. You, you, ever play, you never played 21 in St. Louis? Yeah, I did. I just stayed, I just stayed around the hoop. <laughs> By yourself? <laughs> I tried to tip them out. We played 21, we played tips. I was just always yeah. just trying to, hey, boom, you out, nigga. Put you back <laughs> Get them to zero, then get them out. Get them out of here. Get them out of here. You're thinking about, okay, they're going to play basketball. Let me, what can I do to make you look like I'm just cool? I'm going to stay around the hoop and just tip. And then nobody really questioned my blackness. What is tips? <laughs> tips are when you hit the ball back in the net. If they miss, uh, mm -hmm. you get a rebound and you hit it back in before you hit the ground. Wait, is that a game? Yeah. No, it's it is a game on its own, but it's also it's like a game you can play within twenty one. Huh. Tips is something you can just play. Just me and you could just jump and throw the ball. In New York, we call it taps. Oh, so you <laughs> don't have to like dribble and like run or nothing. You just gotta. Uh, now that you're playing the game, tips. You don't have to dribble or run. You just literally jump and throw the ball back at each other. Yeah, I mean, it, you you still it's 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 almost like twenty one. It's still the same as twenty one, but there are people who just. Who who finesse it and they just wait around the hoop and this will tip you out. So yeah, yeah, like, you look like, like you said. I feel like to hear if you played taps in school, it was for the grade. Like you, you like you was threatened, you would fail if you didn't participate. I didn't see you willingly play in any of the sports. How how we got gym courts in in New York? Were like just, just majorly scratched scraped up from the Thames, or how did y'all do that? Did <laughs> Have That's stuff? funny though, because New York is like worldwide known for playground basketball. That is literally <laughs> their like Rucker and uh, West Fourth or East Fourth for yeah. the, the cage. You can you can go to um I forgot the one shoe store. They got the the soft sole Tims and it's got like an air bubble in there. <laughs> <laughs> I so want to know where did this come from that New York is just be running around in Tim's playing basketball. <laughs> I see it in all the memes. I want to know how it got started. You you see the Tim's. Yeah. New York single handedly kept Tim's Timberland in production. Basically. I didn't even know Timberlands were like considered work boots. I just thought they were only for the style. Like right? I thought they were, I didn't realize people like other people just wear those to work, work, work construction in. Well, yeah. black culture made it such a thing. I think it's hilarious when I see people actually working in Tim's. Right. <laughs> but I mean, have you, have you ever tried to walk through the streets of New York at night? Like that's work. You got to step over dead bodies, rats, <laughs> trash bags. I'm pretty sure it's just, bags. there do be a lot of trash bags outside of New York at night. That is not a lie, especially in. Uh, yes. You um, need to make sure your feet are really covered in New York. I tried to wear sandals one time. What? Walking around Manhattan, and the back of my feet was so black. And I'm telling y'all, it took me forever to scrub. I thought of just a little soap and water was going to take it off. No, it was grime. Grime? You got to get a cup, grime. Of, get a cup of gasoline and a toothbrush and just scrape the ball of your foot. That's the easiest way to get it Guess off. for exposing your feet in New York? That's wild. <laughs> Like I was wondering why everybody was wearing Tim's in the summer instead of flip flops. So I was like, oh, I would get my black card. I would get my black card taken away when it comes to Tim's because I never knew how to lace them up. So I just like I always laced them up tight to the top. Oh, then, Nick, I, I'm not in from New York, and I know that. You know wow. to do? I tried the YouTube video where they show you how to lace them up the right way, where they with the, with the fold, but it just it don't it never looked good on me. Tim's just, like, like, were your the jeans way... on the inside or the outside of your Tim's? <laughs> Did you look up a video from a construction worker teaching you how to do it? Yeah. <laughs> Last time I wore Tim's was when we had the shackles on the bottom of our jeans. Like remember, you did, like you fold up the bottom part, but like now the way everybody does it, I'm just Tim's is not you me. Call them shackles. That's what we, you know when you cuff the jeans up at the bottom. Yeah, yeah we just call them cuffing. Oh. <laughs> Jackals. Jackals. Y'all do everything more aggressive. Even tips, you're like, we call it taps. Like that's not even a big, <laughs> not even a big change. <laughs> you know, cuff without shackles. <laughs> How do you correlate cuffs to shackles? Like shackles bind you down. Eh? More aggressive to hear. <laughs> <laughs> that might just be me. I thought they were called shackles. <laughs> so y'all so was saying Mary, Mary, when Mary Mary came out, y'all didn't know what to do. 
<laughs> Get them shackles off your feet. Wait, what? <laughs> My pants going to drag. <laughs> Dems are wildly uncomfortable. When you wear them like the way rappers wear them, they're wildly uncomfortable to walk in. Yeah, that's and why nobody really wears it. Like, you can't run for a subway the way that they tell you you supposed to have your, your Tim's lace up. Like, they're super loose. This is super, super loose. loose. Take them off after the video. Like, they it's just for the video purposes only. As soon as the video off, it's like heels. Like, whoa, we take them right off. But I was never this Tim guy. I was always the field. The Tim's had the field boots, the little uh, sneaker looking ones, like the, the, the chicken and broccoli ones. Those are, those are the ones I wore. What? Uh, that makes those, are ones, those are the ones with the kitten heel, right? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Where are the chicken and broccoli ones? The beef and broccolis and the um there was the beef and broccoli was the green and tan, had the green and inside on the so hair knows what I'm talking about. You're yeah. a fat you, you that know? is so New York. Hang on, it's called the beef and broccoli Tim. We had the beef and broccolis. I'm gonna pull them People up. Didn't even like black people. <laughs> the company was like, Can y'all stop? Imagine them hearing that they were called the beef and broccolis. Like, what? Who, who's buying these? Oh, and what's the, what is the tan and white woods called? I just knew the beef and brocks. Hold no, on, let me let me let me show you. They called the country gravies, uh, man. Let me let me show y'all what uh, what Dick is talking about right now. Let me show y'all these these ugly joints that he had. This is what Nick was like. Nick was like, oh man, nah, Nick, you did not. Nah, listen, that's them. This is back. Look at the back of it. Look at the back. You had them tied up. You, you had them tied up tight. Oh. How many seconds? This is crazy. New Yorkers wore the, it was the cheese on cheese, the macaroni and cheese, and the uh the I, yeah cheese on cheese. The cheese on cheese was the same ones like that, but it was tan on tan. Macaroni and cheese was like the little the little uh I forgot what the color was, but then it was the cheese. But yeah, we named our boots after foods. The, I, are the basic oh, wow. tips called the butters? The butters, yeah. I just never, I never, I, I didn't think that was part of a series. <laughs> 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 of delicious names for tips. <laughs> oh, that's the one I was asking. The cream in the the regular Tim color and the cream. That's the macaroni and cheese. Oh, the regular <laughs> what bag? That's the mac macaroni and cheese. It's got a little, you know, where the beef and broccoli, where the green is on the side. That part is just a little bit like light. Tan, like beige. That's the macaroni and cheese. Those one. beef and broccolis were horrible. Can you imagine getting stomped out from niggas in those? Hold on, wait. Hold on, wait. Let me show you. Hold on. Wait, hold all on, the baby on, blue on, ones. On, Did the baby on. blue ones have a name? Uh, I, didn't, I didn't get those. You was only supposed to get those three. You wasn't supposed to get anything outside of those three colors right there. Oh, Did really? you use your phone to show it? This is this is the <laughs> this is the, the, that's the mac and cheese. The mac and cheese. <laughs> mac and cheese. Why is that the mac and cheese? I thought I was thinking of something else. Who who, who, could, who picked these? Uh, but they say women's. That's why I was asking. <laughs> they got this little kitten heel right here. <laughs> Go to the men's version to hear. <laughs> there is no men's version. All of, <laughs> all of those Tim's say defeat. <laughs> <laughs> Nick, what borough are you from? I'm from uh, Queens. Listen, Nick is giving us uh, a guided history on New York culture. <laughs> For real though, this is how I've urban never heard of it. Invented. This is all new to me. New I York knew, is the uh, whole world and stuff. You never have to leave. Listen, well, I'm tell you, we went to New York, boy. They lit me up because I said bacon. Can I have a bacon, egg, and cheese? And they're like, you ain't from here. What? It's all one word: bacon, egg, and cheese, salt, pepper, ketchup. Bacon, egg, and cheese. Yeah, I don't. I, I like can't. test your speed. Like it's just it's not from here. <laughs> you have to say that as as if there's no space in between and and cheese. They not they not gonna give it to you if you don't say it fast enough. What do you want? <laughs> I want the bacon egg to go to like to like go to the back of the line. Get out. Go to the back of the line. Go to the back of the line. Get out my bodega, bro. Try get again. Out, get out of here. You sound now, like, like you with the headband, huh? Sound like you better to try to say it right. Bacon egg and cheese. But it said it don't on the menu. It ain't well. Some of these places don't even have menu. You could just ask yeah. for stuff, and they don't even have the menu. You would never go to a New York menu. You see bacon, egg, and cheese. You just got to <laughs> bacon, egg, and cheese. Bacon, what would it be listed under, sir? Uh, <laughs> what would it? Be? <laughs> what you, would it be on the menu? But you know what's crazy? Like I, I when I came out here, I ordered a hero, and they didn't know what a hero was out here. They, uh, you know what a hero is, right? Sound right? sandwich, right? Sandwich. All right, now you know what a pizza pie is too. Pizza? A slice of 
Oh, okay. No, because out here, when I said pizza pie, people were like pie. Like I said, let me get a slice. And they thought I was actually talking about pie. But in New York, we say pizza pie. Let me get a slice of pie. Right. Oh, so a slice of pie is a slice of pizza? Slice of pizza. Because we, when you order a, a, a whole pizza, it's a pie. And we right. said, let me get a slice. It sounds like y'all use all the correct terms for food on shoes. And now y'all don't know how to order food. <laughs> 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 Let me tell you what one of the best parts of New York is. Two o'clock in the on? morning, getting pizza, fresh pizza at two o'clock in the morning. That's like two bucks. Whew, yeah. There's the just there. nothing. Last, that experience is, is there's nothing like it. Last right. time we were there, I almost, Nick and I almost ended our friendship because he was trying to convince me I need to go see Drag On on ice. And I was like, nigga, I'm not. <laughs> <laughs> Everything Yo, like, can you imagine a Rough Riders musical on ice? I would pay top dollar. <laughs> oh to my see God. Eve if come they, out. They skate, they skate no Tim's. The Tim's has got the ice black. <laughs> it would be successful. It would be, it'd be, it'd be Absolutely. True. But yeah. they, 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 they kept falling because the, the skates weren't laced up all the way. <laughs> <laughs> DMX is probably get here for macaroni salad versus potato salad. Oh my god! <laughs> oh my I god! I completely talk, forgot we were talking about that. I mean, more than we've ever gotten off topic. I completely forgot we were talking uh, DMX about DMX on on ice. That's it's a much far. much funny funnier conversation, by the way. Yeah. <laughs> DMX ice skating is probably the with first just a, a blade on the bottom of Tim's. That's not a skate. It's just <laughs> it's just a knife. <laughs> it's a knife. <laughs> what if what if it? <laughs> <laughs> what if it was just a switchblade? What if they had wrapped rubber bands around switchblade in the bottom of Paratim? <laughs> <laughs> They'll have to double the blade for a Tim. Yeah. <laughs> They'll definitely have to double the blade. They skate. They just skate on uh, tap cars. They just skate on MTA cars. <laughs> I've never owned Tim's. Tim's are. I didn't know how much how much they were. They're like. Almost two hundred dollars. Yeah, they went up. Yeah, they're wildly expensive. Like one fifty, I think, six inch. Yeah, shit is crazy. One eighty. We better get them tails. Get your tails from offline or go to DSW. And get I remember the ugly I... without the collar. It's just a six inch without the brown collar at the top. Nah, <laughs> not to hear. I had a phase where I had probably about five, six pairs of Tims in college. Really? Yeah, in, in high school and in college, but in high school I didn't really have to walk around that much. But when I got to college, I was like, bro, because they're just clock, clock, clock. I, like, I was yeah. like, I'm not. This is, I'm not going to be walking around. Well, I think here. I had lugs. Y'all remember lugs? Oh, <laughs> lugs my God. Got picked on. <laughs> lugs. You had, you, Meg, you had lugs? You openly admitting it? I had lugs. Meg, you had the you, oh, ones? No. Lugs was Frunk Flex's driving shoe. You can't wear those. <laughs> <laughs> You either, you either had a car collection or you had a lot of artists that you weren't paying, like Birdman. Nothing <laughs> nothing in between if you wore lugs. That was it. Nobody wore. Listen, lugs were like, look, if I'm going to be poor, we're just going to be payless. I'm not going to be caught dead in lugs. I'd rather just wear cads or black shoes. <laughs> lugs are a dead giveaway. And they're like, Tim's for the people who can't afford Tim's. That's that's what it is. Y'all remember when Akeem Olajuwon, when the when the Scotty Pippen airs came out and up tempos, and Akeem Olajuwon came out with the thing that just had thirty four on the side from Payless. That was like the uh, the Dada's when it had the little ah. center on it. Remember oh, the, the Dada Supreme was a Dada was Supreme a, with the it was a wild era history. Spinners <laughs> on shoes might be the peak of blackness. That was <laughs> Kids was so mean because Elijah Wan came out with his sneakers and said he wanted to target the kids that couldn't afford the Jordans <laughs> and stuff like that. So he came up with the Elijah Wan's and you literally got teased if you bought the like the, <laughs> the Elijah Wan sneakers. Help the problem. He, he made it worse. He made it worse. Right. Listen. Him, him, Stephon Marbury with their little twenty dollars sneakers. He they made it. Oh, worse. Nick, those were eight bucks. Listen, at look at Stephen Berry's. Look at these. Look at these. Well. <laughs> Spree Wells is People would kneel down and hit the little spinner. They'd be like, boy, spin your ass up out of here with the boot ass shoes. <laughs> Yo, this was you really, a, this was really a thing. I didn't know anybody with those shoes. I no. knew a couple people. I knew a couple people in high school with those. And I they was were like, brave. bro, just take the jokes. 
It's better you just go back to those Reeboks and take the jokes and wear these. You're going to make it worse for yourself. Mm-mm. I remember the this North cool. Carolina 13s came out, and I asked my dad for them. They were like 150. He went to Foot Locker and came back with three pair of the low top Air Force Ones with three different colors. He was like, Look, now you can get the wear out of three of these. He bought me the Carolina blue, the Chicago bull, and the all gray or gray ones. So I had to go to school and act like I was happy. I was like, Y'all out there wearing them Jordans, but I can have three pairs of these. You know what I'm saying? North Carolina blue, Chicago bulls. <laughs> Anytime a kid a kid has to talk about the efficiency of things, I got three for these for one of those cars. You lost you already lost. That was a lie. Yo, you ever but my dad bought me the Dr. J. I was like, man, y'all like Jordan, but Dr. J became before him. You know what I'm saying? It was over. No lie, y'all. I had my mom would get me raggedy Nikes from the PX that were just like shoes you wore if you, you worked. You worked for a long time, and I would I would say these were obscure basketball players. I was like, bro, these is the Nick Anderson. They was like, really? And what? because he was like, you know him, but you don't know him well enough to say they're not his shoes. Like Nick Anderson, like he the ain't been, like the third big, the third. He was like the third best scorer on the Magic at the time. It was like Shaq, <laughs> Pity, and then Nick Anderson. I was like, bro, these is the Nick Anderson. They was like, oh, okay. I, <laughs> there was no internet, so there was no way to check and see Listen, if I was lying. I remember one time my mom had bought me a pair of Jordash tennis shoes. Right, they came from Ventures. Ventures is like, Ventures is like Target before Target. Right, so. They used to sell these shoes called Jordash, the same Jordash that made the jeans. And these joints had an air bubble that was really just a, a plastic. <laughs> it's just a you plastic. You better not brick. say a plastic thing over. It was the just like a the... plastic brick. It was it was no it was no squishiness to it. And I was just so thankful that the kids in the summer program couldn't read because they was like, "What Jordan is them?" I was like, "These news, they French." <laughs> French. <laughs> <laughs> and they, never questioned, they never questioned it they were so i wish i could find a picture of them i was just so but anyway uh potato salad i mean macaroni salad or potato salad what we call it i didn't even dissect these two uh, french jordans and people will let you get away with that is hilarious Jordash. i'm going look, with that's because look that's what this is the east st louis school system them little dumb kids cannot tell Door dash. To hear was the smartest person there. <laughs> I'm gonna find them. I'm gonna find them. I'm gonna show y'all. I'm going with potato salad. I'm going with. I'm going with neither. I don't want neither one of their sauces touching my food. That's I told, not the name of this show. But I, I I don't like macaroni. I don't like macaroni salad or. Potato you gotta salad. pick one or you die. But you had the potato salad Tim's. They had the white and then the little <laughs> bit yellow. <laughs> they had the white laces. If you ask me that way, all right, the potato <laughs> salad. <laughs> uh, I like macaroni salad more. Really, like, Megan? Yeah, like, because, I mean, potato salad is cool, but then there's a high potential to get a yucky potato salad. I feel like I've had less nasty macaroni salad than potato salad. Even like store brought store bought like basic macaroni salad is decent, but not potato salad. Yeah. Yeah, I'm, I'm gonna have to go. I'm gonna have to go macaroni salad on this one myself. Dang. No. Well, well, Kevin, which one are you going with, Kev? Potato salad. He gotta and, represent uh, his family. What you going with, uh what you going with, Nick? <laughs> salad Tim's. <laughs> go with potato salad. Oh, okay. Well, it looks like the macaroni salad has it. Last topic of the day. Listen up, all right? You have a 99% chance to win $100,000 versus a 50-50 chance at $10 million. Old to be taking big risks, so I'm just going to go with the 99% chance of (laughs) of 100,000. You know what I'm saying? At least I'm too old to be like that 50-50, like, you know what I'm saying? If I don't get that 10 million, I gotta go home, bro. Nah, I'm just gonna go with this. For 50-50? Go with 50, 50. <laughs> hey, aren't you like 35? <laughs> I'm, nah, I'm about to be 40, man. And, Are and, you? Yeah, I'm 39. I'm about to be 40 in May. And I that ain't too old for 50-50. Nah. Right. I don't know. After taxes, that hundred thousand is like 80, okay? And you're getting the whole hundred. You're getting the whole hundred, man. You're getting the whole hundred. I know, but you the government trying to put taxes exists. in a hypothetical. You don't it's have to pay city. taxes. Yes, you do. Or else you, the IRS jails people. Hello. You don't no this is a hypothetical game. There's no IRS. 
It's there just is. fun. Uh, there's an iris always. Meg's like, what about capital gains? Like, girl, we got- <laughs> I know. It's like twenty percent tax rate. No. What kind of coin is being flipped? <laughs> <laughs> Uh, yeah. I, mean, I don't this... feel like 50 50 is a better i don't know i'd rather go for that because 10 million is like that's a 50 percent chance i get 10 million but then 99 percent i'm gonna get a hundred thousand dollars like that ain't nothing i could look i feel like if you hustle hard enough you can make that in a year okay but 50, 10 million that's a that's it's hard so let's i know a lot of people that this. hustle and don't make a hundred thousand in a year so i don't know what you're talking about Meg. no i'm saying like that's a possible it's a higher it's possibility to hear. You, okay right you could hustle and possibly make a hundred thousand dollars not as many people gonna hustle and make 10 million a year so you might as well take that chance Mm. I I agree with Megan. I think that's an outstanding point. I think ten million dollars is life changing. Hundred grand. Most people in America could probably blow a hundred grand within a year, and not even. Think. I mean, you buy a car, fifty grand, you're half of that's gone. It'd be mm-hmm. you'd be you could blow ten million, but it'd take a little bit longer than than it would to take a hundred grand. Yep. Blow, blow. I say, man, I go for the ten million, man. Ten million is life changing money. Mm. I get a I get a hairline reattachment surgery ASAP. And lipo BBL. I mean, lipo BBL ab <laughs> installation. I get you all that stuff. Get abs made. We're probably less than a decade away from that. No, like, people are already doing that. They're already doing it. They grab, I feel they, like the, uh, the way that but like butt lifts and butt like surgery became super super popular and like it was kind of like not really when when people were getting fake boobs, they weren't getting fake butts like that. Like at some point, people are going to be like, people really had to work out to have abs. <laughs> like it's going to be like a foreign. It's going to be like a foreign idea. The yeah, way I horse- agree with that. I think you're going to you go, go in something like like the tanning booth, and you just go in there and it like focusing focusing in, in on your abs, and you don't really have to work out anymore. Like that'd be Riley how it goes. Like bro, f- to fix your eyes, you you lay down and they they put a laser in your eye, and in like ten minutes you can see twenty twenty. That's, <laughs> That's what I'm about to get. That's not plan. That. Are you getting it for real, Meg? Yeah, I asked my fiance for that for Christmas. I was like, I want to go get. That's my Christmas present, so I gotta go get it. Done. Finally, I get rid of those frameless glasses. <laughs> <laughs> glasses don't even have lenses. Yeah. <laughs> next question. <laughs> <laughs> gonna give you the lasix, lasix through the glasses. I don't know. <laughs> I feel like I went. I went for the money on a game show on that uh, Joker's Wild with suit. I went for the money, the big prize. I think it was like ten thousand dollars, and I could have just walked away with like, like five thousand. I went for it and did not win. So now, what I'm was just your like, win for it though? Huh? What was your win for it though? <laughs> Um, I think I pulled a card or, or pulled a lever or something like that, and I could have just been like, "No, nah, I'll take what I got and I'm out." That sounds like it's not fifty fifty though. Pulling I just said I would just play it. I would play it close. I mean, fifty fifty is you either win it or you don't. I just I don't know. I, I like the I like the odds better. I like the odds better. Would you have walked away if there was only two cards? Ah, <sighs> two cards. Uh, That's what we talk about. See, I regret this because I had, now that you mentioned that to hear, I had, what was the game show that Wayne Brady was, to, that he hosted? Let's Make a Deal. Uh, let's Make, let's a, make deal. a Deal. I was on Let's Make a Deal around here, right? And um, he, so he had the envelope in it. And I was like, he says, he had the envelope in his hand. He was like, the envelope absolutely has money in it. I think it was like 700 bucks or something. He was like, it has $700 in here. He was like, or you can take door one or door two. And you don't know what's behind them. So he's like, what do you want to take? So in, in this instance, that's like the 99% chance of 100,000. I decided to take that, which was the $700. I was like, I'm going to walk away with 700 bucks. Give me that. Y'all, if I was, I was going to pick a uh, door number one, door number one, I forgot what I would have gotten, but it was like, I think it was like $2,000. And, and that would have made me the second highest winner for the show, which means I would have gone to the final round. And when I played it, like, okay, let's pretend I went, I won. So I was like, oh my gosh, I lost the whole entire episode because I took the for sure 
money as opposed to gambles. But you made it a 0% chance of getting all that other stuff. That's too much pressure. Like when I go to Vegas, whatever, I, as soon as I put that coin in and like $50 come out, I leave. I don't stay. <laughs> I don't put nothing else on the table. That's $50 I ain't even have. Like if, if this is $100,000 or 10 million, I could walk away with a hundred thousand that wasn't mine. I mean, I mean, invested in something, but I ain't trying to. I ain't trying to have that pressure where you you know you be in those shows like you said, and then you go all out, then you walk away with nothing, and all the game show hosts go, "Oh, sorry, to hell, like nah." <laughs> Nick going all the way to Vegas to play slots is a pretty funny visual. <laughs> that was my big takeaway. <laughs> 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 Big goes one time, Pat. He's like, fifty. All right, flight seven thirteen, boarding now. Wait, you didn't even do the airport for this story? No, no, they have these. They have these in the airport now. <laughs> I always wondered that. Like, either you are really addicted, or you do people really fly there just to gamble there? People no, be gambling maybe, until maybe they have to walk it. onto the plane. Yeah, that's how. Take it down. Like when I go to 7 Eleven, I get the little scratch offs. I scratch off, it was like $20. The guy would be like, hey, why don't you try your love for I'm like, nah, come on, just give me my 20. I'm out. Get me a couple, my family of, loves scratch -off. couple of 7 Eleven hot dogs, <laughs> three bowls, I'm out. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> so he don't even team. gamble. He just has stock in 7 Eleven hot dogs. <laughs> <laughs> he has so stock he, in beef yeah. stock. Yeah. <laughs> Somebody got me a gift card for 7 Eleven for my birthday. It will be put to good use. Trust to believe. Personal pickles all day long. Personal pickles. <laughs> Personal pickles. I didn't know that was a thing until to hear. <laughs> well, yeah, man. Chip. That's funny. I don't know. I don't know if I, I, I feel like I see it with Clay Saint. Because that, that 99% is. Way more convincing. For the hundred grand though? Over 10 mil. Just so uh, that's not enough. It's a lot. I mean, if it was like five hundred thousand, maybe. But right. 10 yeah. mil graph is that's a bro. Here's the thing though, yet. like 99% is damn near guaranteed, bro. Like that's that's what kind of what if you get the one percent oh, zero? Kind of right. Right. You just the Lord don't love you. percent accurate, right? <laughs> And, and pulling out is 50 50. It's like, which one would you choose? Pulling out, I don't think it's 50 50. Nah. No, I don't think so either. <laughs> she probably won't get pregnant or she ain't. That's what it is. <laughs> that, does, that doesn't mean that's that's, that, that, that doesn't mean it's 50 50, though. <laughs> I feel bad for all the people who pulled out on time, but the pre cum got in there and made it. Ah, uh, good old fashioned pre cum. That pre cum <laughs> ruining lives since the beginning of time. <laughs> Pre come slide in there, and then two weeks later, you get that. Hey, we need to talk text. You were like, fuck, pre come. <laughs> Imagine learning about pre before scientists knew about pre come. It was just come and a baby, and you were being careful, and you have like 20 kids, and they're like, you know, this pre come. You're like, pre. <laughs> There's a pre come. I don't see how they. How, wait, wait. How did they find out? That there was be worried about the heavy load. No one they cared. Probably about studied that. it. They they was probably studying sex. You know, the Kinsey and them was studying sex in labs. But you had to pull out before. No, I just no they probably looked at a uh pre pre cum is before you even go in, ain't it? No, it's, pre cum is is happening while you're doing it, but it's before the final. Like countdown. it's supposed to be like the lubrication for the the actual sperm it's like the you know what i'm saying it's before the sperm gets into the lubrication but there's there's sperm in the pre come though right yeah well sometimes like windshield wiper fluid we'll, just we'll kind of get the party started before it rains <laughs> 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 that's weird because those first few swipes they'd be like they, it seems like it hurt <laughs> you got to get it nice and wet uh. <laughs> When you were young, you were only trained to worry about the heavy load. No one cared about like whatever was, was leaking early. That's what I'm nah, saying. I learned about pre cum when I was a little. Mm -hmm. That's like one of the scariest things you learn up, up top. It's just like, you can, because they say the pull out method don't work. They'd be like, you have pre babies. You can have it, it can happen to you. Well, we was really educated about that in Drag On's third track <laughs> on the <laughs> album. <laughs> 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 Pre-cum trauma. 
a, dra- a drag on callback in 2021. I did not have that on the bingo. <laughs> the bingo. No card. one did. No. <laughs> wow. I feel like Dragon's gonna get a lot of pings on Google because of this. You know? yeah. Yeah. You know, I was like, what if we what if we just tried to do it? Like, what if we tried to do what those people did with GameStop and just make Dragon <laughs> Ah, with Dragon career. <laughs> Everybody go stream a Dragon yeah. song today. Dragon playlist and we're gonna post it to our our profiles and everybody share that bitch. We finna get <laughs> like GameStop is hilarious. <laughs> <laughs> I want it. I want it to be covered on CNN. A resurgence to New York-based rapper Melvin Williams, professionally known as Drag On, is it's trending on Spotify's high. <laughs> professionally known as Dragon. I'm sorry. What? Oh, Dragon. <laughs> Dragon. What was the tape? H2O. H2O is seeing record high numbers. <laughs> <laughs> So funny. I know. Oh bring my God. Back. Come on, bring that back. If we, if we get drag on popping, we got to get Pat a verse. That's the only way we can make it happen if Pat gets a verse. But on a drag on song? Yeah, Pat has a rap like drag on. You have to be like, I'm coming through with his own. Is that really how he raps? Oh, Is I drag can't on wait. on Instagram? I drag, can't he's on Instagram. And, uh, he, he oh, does- it's drag hyphen on. Yes. <laughs> wait, wait. Dragon with the hyphen, as I said. Oh, I thought you meant dragon with the little Beyonce. Oh, no. Is drag, like drag someone on, drag on, because his his verses was so was so dope. He had to drag it on into the next bar. You know what I'm saying? Drag on. <laughs> they were so dope, or they lasted so long. <laughs> this thing is just not dragging what it on. Means. That's not what it stood for at all. And uh, you're oh, you're, you're a hater, man. You're forcing it. I don't know yet. I, I'm gonna see. I might be a huge fan tomorrow. Okay, so I'm on Dragon's IMDb, right? And oh, here we go. <laughs> let's let's put it to a vote, though. <laughs> right? <laughs> Give me the 10, not 50 50 chance for 10 milli. Okay. 50 50. Pat? 50 50 for 10 milli. Yeah? 50 50 for the 10 mil. I'm going for the 99. And Nick, what do you think? You a with? safe nigga. 99. And that's when Drag On first album came out in 19. <laughs> <laughs> Rough Rider Interscope. And uh, his first album was I Spit These Bars. This was the first. Just for that, both y'all about to get the 1% of nothing. I'm going to switch mine to the 50 50. <laughs> <laughs> it was really called I Spit Bars. Oh, Spit These Bars. Bars was the number one single off his album. He also Isn't dropped like the club president the- of his fan club, and you the you also the vice president and the treasurer and the secretary. Oh, and the I would pay man. good money for a time machine to go back in time when Nick moved to LA. Like, hey man, what do you think about the new Dragon? <laughs> I'm sorry, the who? <laughs> Dragon. I had the goggles, <laughs> goggles that go on top of your head. <laughs> uh, the Dragon, Dragon was big, man. Uh... <laughs> You asked like seven people just in the examples that you gave us. So I know that you were walking around me like, you know, Dragon, I know you're cool, right? (laughs) You're cool. (laughs) Sorry, sorry, man. (laughs) You're cool, man. Surely you know about Dragon. (laughs) Surely. um, Looks like the, the 99, I'm sorry, the 50 50 has it on that one. Uh, we're going to go ahead and wrap out today's show. Definitely want to thank our special guest, Nick Carthon, for pulling up and hanging out with us, man. And a, a big shout out to the squad, Kevin on stage, Meg, Scoop, Patrick Cloud. And we will see you guys next week on another episode of Squadcast Versus. Peace. Peace.